Welcome to ML Gradle Episode 3, Customizing Deployments from MarkOgic University. To follow along with this tutorial, you'll need to download and install MarkOgic. You must also have installed Java version 1.8 or higher and the latest version of Gradle. The MarkOgic ML Gradle plugin will be downloaded and included when your project initially builds. Download the tutorial files and follow installation instructions in the tutorial README by going to github.com slash marklogicuniversity slash ml-gradle-series. In this video, you will learn how to use mlgradle to deploy a marklogic web application, also deploy a marklogic REST API extension, and load content to our database. In Episode 2 of the ML Gradle series, we created a MarkLogic database, application server, and other configurations for our Star Wars application. In this episode, we will use ML Gradle tasks to deploy our application code and database content. Our Star Wars demonstration application is a web page populated with two Google charts showing Star Wars characters and their heights. There is a filter slider to constrain to a subset of height values. The filter refreshes both the table and the column chart. The data populating the table and the column chart come from our MarkLogic database. The web page is generated with a simple X query combined with JavaScript to create the Google table and column chart from data retrieved from our Star Wars content database. The data format used by Google Charts is JSON. The JSON structure is specific to Google Charts and will return the required JSON structure via a REST API extension. ML Gradle creates a specific directory structure when projects are created with the ML New Project or ML Scaffold task. If you use ML Gradle without using the ML New Project or ML Scaffold, you can always create the directory structure to ensure ML Gradle tasks can locate configurations and application code to deploy. Since we are concerned about deploying our application code, we'll concentrate on the ML-Modules directory structure. Specifically, let's look at the root and the services directories. The root directory will deploy any content within to the module database configured for your application server. This includes scripts and any other scripts and subdirectories. For our application, this application content includes an X query that displays our web page to browsers that connect to our Star Wars application server on port 8090. The modules subdirectory contains JavaScript that our web page calls to display the Google chart, table, and column chart. This subdirectory and JavaScript file will also get deployed to our MarkLogic module database. Application code in the module database are protected just like our Star Wars character content, enabling us to choose who can read and execute code. The services directory is used by MLGradle to store REST API extensions to module databases. Our REST API extension will be called by Google Charts JavaScript to retrieve Star Wars character names and heights and display them. We decided to use a REST extension since Google Charts requires a URL to query content over the web. In addition, the result that Google Charts is expecting needs to be formatted in JSON in a specific structure for returning columns and rows to Google Charts. We'd like to process this as quickly and efficiently as possible, so we're going to take advantage of our configured database indexes. We can pull required values directly from indexes, which performs and scales efficiently. We could then make any future modifications to our code without needing to change the URL that the Google Charts calls. In Episode 2 of the ML Gradle series, we used ML Gradle's ML Deploy task. We can also use this task to deploy our application code to our module database. The entire application deployment 
can be removed by using the ML undeploy ML griddle task. Because this is a destructive task, care must be taken. To ensure a catastrophic accident doesn't take place, the task requires a property, dash P, confirm equal true to be set. Using the ML deploy task loads our configurations and our application code. But if we only want to load our application scripts, we could use the ML load modules task. This loads all server-side script we have in the ML-modules directory. We can clear our modules database and then load our server-side scripts again by calling the ML reload modules task. During development, when changes in testing are frequent, you might want to watch the ML-modules directory loading any changes. In Episode 3's Part 1-App-Deploy directory, after changing to our Star Wars project directory, we run the command gradle space ML deploy. After deploying our application, we can go to the URL of http colon slash slash localhost colon 8090 slash index.sqi for our configured application server. Log into the application using our new project username, Star Wars dash reader and the password of Star Wars dash reader. Our web page displays without data since we've not loaded our content yet. We'll do that next. MarkLogic Content Pump, or MLCP for short, is frequently used to load various document content to MarkLogic databases. MLGradle can access the MLCP's Java libraries, then use Content Pump directly from a Gradle task. We can pass in all the Content Pump options that we'd like by adding them to a customized Gradle task. To call MLCP from Gradle tasks, we need to change the build.settings file to download the MLCP Java libraries from our repository. Then, we need to tell Gradle that these are dependencies for our project to resolve. We also need to create a Gradle task in the build.settings file. We created an example task we called deploy content. This is a custom task deriving from an ML Gradle task type of MLCP task. In this task, we utilize the same MLCP options to accomplish our desired results. In this example, we are importing documents from two directories, one for Star Wars character data and the other for Star Wars image files. Note that we are also applying permissions to these documents so that our Star Wars reader user can read the content and access indexed values, but cannot change or delete any content. After changing to Episode 3's Part 2-MLCP directory, then the Star Wars Project subdirectory, we run the command Gradle space deploy content which runs our MLCP task, loading our content to our database. Refreshing our web page displays the charts complete with our content. We've successfully deployed our application, loaded our content, and tested with our user account. We can use the Gradle undeploy task to undo everything we have deployed. Then, later, stand everything back up again quickly and easily. Learn more by visiting the ML Gradle GitHub site and the ML Gradle wiki at https colon slash slash github.com slash marklogic dash community slash ml dash gradle. In this episode, you learned about deploying application code, deploying a marklogic REST extension, and loading application content. To get marklogic, download from developer.marklogic.com. Get more training by visiting marklogic.com slash training. Also, a complete selection of on-demand topics is available at mlu.marklogic.com slash on-demand. Or, download the MarkLogic mobile app available on both the Apple App Store and Google Play. 
And don't forget to show off what you've learned. Add MarkLogic as a skill on your LinkedIn profile today. Thank you for watching this MarkLogic University on-demand tutorial.